Hello, I'm Josh from the UK OSINT community, and in today's video, we'll be looking at Facebook Marketplace. This will be quite a beginner-friendly video, because rather than going in-depth into the marketplace itself, we'll instead be focusing on user profiles and how we can pivot from a user profile to a marketplace profile, because those are two separate things. And actually, I only found out about these techniques in the last year or two. So it's very frustrating to think of the years of investigations I've done on hundreds of Facebook profiles where I must have missed results that were sitting right there simply because I didn't know how to find them. So if finding a Facebook Marketplace profile isn't something that you know how to do either, then this video will hopefully help you to start uncovering those results that you may have not been finding previously. So let's get straight into it. So as I mentioned, we won't be focusing a lot of our attention here on Facebook Marketplace itself, but I did just want to start here as a basic introduction. For anyone who isn't as familiar with Marketplace, I definitely encourage you to come here and have a look around yourself, run some searches, try out the different filters, and look at some different listings. And you'll soon see that you actually have a lot of functionality here. We can filter by things like location, and you can give a radius on how close to that location you want to see items for. You can filter by different categories and filter the price. And then as you actually start looking at the listings, you'll start to see some of the information that is often available to you. For example, many people will include phone numbers in the listings. You'll also see a map with a radius, which is kind of an estimation on where that person may live or where they're giving that item from. You'll also often see information from the photos because as you can see on my screen, there's lots of vehicles here and some of them actually show the license plates visibly in them. There's also lots of photos taken inside houses and properties, so you may see valuable information in the background of those photos. And even for people who do redact things like license plates, you'll sometimes see that they don't do it properly. In this example that I found earlier, it is properly redacted, but it does show you a mistake that some people do, which is when they use things like iOS, I believe the brush in iOS often does this, where it's actually kind of transparent. You can see through the brush slightly. Because they've gone over it so many times, it's correct. You can't see the, the license plate fully under here. But it's incredible the amount of times I see that people go over things like this with a black brush or a gray brush, and it makes it a lot harder for them to realize that it's actually transparent. And when you up the brightness and contrast, you may actually see everything that's underneath. So that's something to look out for as well. Also, you'll see lots of the listings here on my screen are related to chess. If anyone does play chess online, reach out to me on LinkedIn. But now let's get over to a user profile and look at what we can do to pivot from that to Facebook Marketplace. So this is a profile I've found just to use as an example. You can see visually looking at it, it doesn't really give us much. There's no background image, no profile picture. It seems to use a business name. We do get some basic or general location data in the introduction section. No photos, three public friends, a status update from 2024 but it says that the content isn't available right now. So there's not really much for us to see here. So what can we do about this? Because here, lots of people just give up. So the first thing before we go on to all of the marketplace things is actually really good to look at these different sections that you can see on the profile because there'll often be information hiding in those that just aren't shown on this initial page. So for example, if we go into the about section, that then takes us here. And you can start to click through the different sections. In this case, there isn't any more information provided, but this can often be a really good source of data, especially things like this relationship and family members tab. But like I said, there is nothing else here, except as you scroll down, there's some different music and likes, things like that, which weren't included on that initial page. So now if we go back, what else can we do? 
A really good technique that I won't get into in this video, but that you can look into is that when you see these three dots over here, there's often this search button and you can run a search through their profile. And even if you don't see the search bar here, there is other ways that you can look into. I definitely recommend going and researching this for you to get their ID number and we'll go through that get their ID number and you can craft your own URL query to run searches. I challenge you to go and look into how you can do that if you don't already know that technique. So other than that, the next thing we would really want to do is to find their Facebook marketplace profile. But how do you do that? Because anytime you look through the profile, for example, look in here at more, there's nothing that just leads you to their marketplace profile. The only time I've kind of seen a route to get there is when the user chooses to make a post and puts that on their homepage here. Otherwise, I've never seen any manual way to go to their Facebook Marketplace profile. So the technique that we're going to go through now is the only way I really know of to make this work. So, okay, first step is that we want to find their user ID. In our case here, we're quite lucky because we actually get their user ID up here in the URL. But other times you'll see that it may say things like facebook.com forward slash john.smith and that's more of a username. So in those cases, you'll need to use other techniques like looking in the source code to actually find that user ID. I won't go into that here in this video because things are very regularly changing with this. I know that lots of old tutorials said to search certain terms, which then ended up changing. Or for example, one way that you can find the user ID is by searching user ID. However, now if you do that, you tend to see your own account's user ID first, and you have to go to the second or third result until you start to see the other person's profile ID. At least that's what I've seen in my experience. So just be aware of that. Make sure that you have collected the correct user ID, or you can always look through the page and try to find other patterns which are more unique with their user ID. But again, that's something that I encourage you to have a look into and kind of come up with your own methodology and techniques around that. But you can also craft bookmarklets and other things which will help you to automate that process of identifying their user ID. And I'll show you a quick example of that, that I again did with AI really quickly so you can replicate that. But so in our case, we are lucky we have their user ID up in the URL here. So the first thing we wanna do is just copy that. And now to go to their Facebook marketplace profile, we want to enter the URL, facebook.com forward slash marketplace forward slash profile, forward slash their user ID. And then as you enter that, that will take us in and we are on Facebook Marketplace, but it opens this pop-up which shows our user. So now again, you'll see their basic information. It also shows us when they joined Facebook, which can be interesting sometimes too. And now in this case, we actually see that they've got six active listings something that we didn't see anything about when looking at their normal profile. And so now as you scroll down, you see all of these different listings that they've currently got active on Facebook Marketplace. So we can now see these three different vehicles. And you may notice this is the example I used earlier where you can see that some of the uh, transparency there in the redactions and things like that. And again, you have information in the backgrounds of photos, maybe partially seeing properties that you can use for geolocation verification, things like that. Something to also be aware of here is that by default, it's usually set on available and in stock, but you always want to change this to all listings because that will then show you any previous listings that they may have as well. In this case, he doesn't have any, but I often find that when I go to someone's marketplace profile, it will say that there's no listings. So lots of people there would simply click off it and think, okay, they've got nothing on the marketplace. 
but actually when you change it to all listings, you might see, you know, hundreds of previous listings in some cases. And that again is so much information in the photos that they've uploaded, in the descriptions of the listings and the information on locations of where they were giving those items from is so much information given to you there. So the final thing that I want to show you before we end off the video is I mentioned bookmarklets and how we can use those to automate the process of finding their user ID and maybe going to their marketplace profile as well. You'll see that lots of people in the OSINT world, the OSINT community have their own bookmarklets, but it's very easy for you to just create your own as well through things like AI, or if you know JavaScript yourself, then that may be easy for you to even just create your own. So as you can see, if I go up to my bookmarks and then come down here to bookmarklets and I click on Facebook marketplace, what this is going to do, you can see there in the, the little pop-up that this is just JavaScript code. And all it does is kind of executes that on the page when I click it. So instead of me bookmarking a URL, I'm bookmarking JavaScript code that executes. So now when I click that, you'll see that it opens up on my screen, Facebook profile ID. We get the user's ID, which you can see does match the one in the URL. So it's gone into the source code and found that automatically. We have a button to copy their ID, or we can click this button to go to their marketplace profile. And then that just opens it up straight away. So rather than you needing to type it and things like that, you can do that a lot more easily through the bookmarklet. And again, I created that in, you know, a minute by using AI chat GPT. So there's lots of different ways that you can go about doing those for yourself. And that brings us to the end of this video. If you weren't already aware of this technique, I hope that this video has now helped you to be able to uncover all of that information that was hidden for you previously. I know that for me, when I first learned about this technique, so many new possibilities opened up and profiles that I thought I'd exhausted. I found out that there were so many marketplace listings simply hiding there that gave me a lot of information when I went back to have a look at them. So I hope that's the same for you. And even if you maybe were aware of this technique, I hope I can challenge you to go have a think of extra ways to expand those capabilities. For example, in this video, I showed just a very basic example of a bookmarklet that lets you find the user's ID and quickly go to their profile. But that's nothing new. Lots of people in the OSINT community have those kinds of bookmarklets, but maybe you can think of extra ones that actually work on the marketplace page itself, maybe to analyze their listings and sort them in ways that Facebook itself doesn't offer. So definitely have a think about that and let us know in the comments what ideas you come up with. But that's all from me. I'll see you in the next video.